So this is a number eight from your workbook in the problems that start on, on in section 2.2. This is the one that's on page 24. So we're using the nearest neighbor algorithm to find a Hamiltonian circuit of reasonable minimal weight in the following graphs. So remember, these are called greedy algorithms. We are trying to minimize our cost with these weighted graphs. So in this one, we're going to start at vertex A. We're going to start at vertex A. So I'm going to highlight that. That's my starting point. So from vertex A, I'm looking for, and that's, maybe that's Gibson. We're looking for the cheapest number, the cheapest weighted number along that edge. So now notice. I'm inspecting all the edges that connect to vertex A. And I've got three, I've got four, I've got another four. That's a five, that's a three. There's two threes. There are two threes. I'm just gonna pick one of them, all right? These are quick and dirty solutions, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fuss about it. I'm just gonna pick the one I see first and I'm going to go for it, okay? And I'm, that, that takes me to vertex B. When I'm at v, vertex B, I have three, I have six, I have four, and I have this four. I have this four here. Nope, that doesn't go with that one. i got to figure out which one that, I think that's a five. So sometimes, sometimes these problems, it's not really clear where these number weights, which, which edges they belong to. I think it's four because the five has a line next to it. So that shows a vertical line next to it. Well, it looks like four is this one because there's not another one close to there. So the rule is, is the closer number will go with that edge. And see, this one has one, this one has one, this one has one. So this line right here, this, this what is it? F, B, has got to be that 5. Uh, I think it's a 4. Well, 5 is closer to that line than it is these two. So, yeah, it, that's the way I'm re going to read it. That's the way I'm going to read it. But there is no number on A, E. A, E? Yeah. A, E is that 5. Is also that 5. Um, I think that's why that, there's that line there. I didn't do, I didn't, I, I pirated this one. I, this isn't one of mine. So the reason I'm doing it is because it, it does look confusing. And I want you guys to just get a solution and not get hung up on the numbers and what edges they belong to. So I'm at B. My choices are this five right here, this three, this six, this four. And I'm going to take this three that takes me down to E. All right? So now I'm at vertex E. Now from vertex E, I've got this two, I've got this two, I've got this seven, or I've got this four. I've got two, seven, or four up here. And I'm gonna take this two. I'm gonna take this two that takes me up to vertex F, F, all right? So now when I'm at vertex F, notice there's only there's three here. There's three options. There's that five, which I've already got highlighted. There's that five. There's, there's eight here. There's five here. And there's, I thought there was a, no, it's just five and eight. There's just five and eight. Well, this five takes me up to this vertex that we've already been at. And remember, if I take that one, then there's going to be three edges at that vertex. And we can't have three edges at a vertex. It doesn't, that's not allowed. Because we're not going to be able to travel all three visiting that vertex only one time. Because in a Hamiltonian circuit, we cannot repeat vertices. So this one is not an option that I have here. This, this five is not an option. So I'm, I'm going I'm to cross that out. But these other two, this eight and this five are an option. And five here is cheaper. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take that, that edge, this five, 
And that takes me down to vertex D. It takes me down to vertex D. And from there, the only vertex I haven't been to is C. So now the graph is kind of telling me where, I, where to go. And I'm going to just take that, that 6. I'm going to take that 6 right there. And now I've, I have visited all my vertices. I have visited all my vertices. I started at A, and I went to B. That edge weight was 3. I was at B. Let me, make, let me condense this a little more. I, I'm going to need more room. So that was 3. And then from B, I went to E. And that edge weight from B to E, that was also 3. So now, so now I'm, I'm showing my route and I'm putting in my edge weight so I can add them up right now. And so when I went to E, now, now I went and got, I went to F here from E. And then and that edge weight was, was 2. And from F, I went to D. And that edge weight was, was 5. And from D, I went to C. And this is where I am right now. I haven't, fi I haven't finished it yet, and that edge weight is 6. All right? I didn't write this down at first because I didn't, wasn't sure if I, I was going to find a complete graph, a circuit. I wasn't sure if I was going to find a Hamiltonian circuit. So I was kind of just playing with it and see if this was. But you see now I, I've got my two endpoints here. I've got my two endpoints. It's C and it's, and it's this A. And they share an edge, so I know I can close this graph. And I can, the reason I can close this graph is I've, I have visited all the vertices right now. So, so the, the edge that's shared between them is that, is that 4, 1. And so now we're just going to make that final edge, and we complete the graph. So my last step is I'm going to go to A, and that edge weight is 4. So those are my weights. And so now I add them up. 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4. That's 10, 15, 17. Is that 23? Yes. So that is my total cost or total weight. They, they kind of mean the same. And then uh, you, if you want to rewrite this to condense it, we went A, B, E, F, D, C, A. That is the solution, that's one of the possible solutions. Is it the best solution? Um, no, again, it's a quick and dirty one. We didn't spend much time doing it. We didn't spend much time on it. We spent a whole eight minutes talking about it. Mr. Bloom kind of, kind of talked slow. I try to explain everything I can think of. But let's look at the follow-up question at the bottom after the question after this uh, problem it's asking was that the best optimal minimal cost Hamiltonian circuit explain was this the best one was this the best Hamiltonian circuit for the graph Yes? No? Maybe? This is the best one. Raul is like a, he's standing he's standing behind the work we just did. Yeah, this is the best one. Well, what's your opinion? What do you think? Guys, there's no right or wrong answer. Remember this is we're we're talking about our process in here. Well, how, what do you guys believe? What did I say about brute force method this week? What did I say about brute force method? This is one of those greedy algorithms. It, it, this could be, it could be the best. There's no guaranteed way using nearest neighbor that you have the best optimal or cheapest Hamiltonian circuit. The only guaranteed way to do that is if we do brute force. That's the only way. And guys, is this a complete graph? Well, how many vertices are there? 
There's six. So if it's a complete graph, how many edges do I need at every vertex? Five. One less. Five. Do I have that? Yes. yes, I do. This is a complete graph. So how many different combinations are there? What's my equation? I can't take that off. I can't do that one-handed. I lost my superhuman strength. So if this, if my n is 6, I'm going to plug that in to my equation up here. So 6 minus 1, that's 5 factorial. You guys remember what 5 factorial is? 3 factorial was 6. What was 5 factorial? Well, it's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. You guys want to look at 120 total combinations? There's some doubles in there. Mr. Bloom, there's, all, there's some doubles in there. So 120 divided by 2. There are 60 unique circuits. We do not have time enough in class for me to do a problem with a brute force problem with 60 possible circuits. 60. So that would be me coming through here and go A, B, C, F, D, E, F, and then I'd have to change it A, B, D, E, F, A, then A, B, E, I mean, I have to go through every one. And there would be 60 of them. And how many edges are in this circuit? There are six edges to every circuit. So 60 circuits, meaning you're adding up how many edge weights? Well, 60 times 6, you're adding up 360 edge weights. So, 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 so just a complete graph with six vertices, figuring out all the unique combinations, not even, not even doing the, the doubles. And that's another thing is that we got to find the, we got to graph out the, the we got to pull out the duplicates. We got to pull out the duplicates. So really, I'd, be, I'd probably be looking at more like 120 circuits for brute force. Guys, that, we don't have enough time in the class to, for me to do that problem. Does that, does that make you upset? Should I go to talk to Dr. Paz and say, you know what, we need, we need three hours for discrete math because we can't get this problem done today in one class period. So you guys, you guys okay not going to third period and fourth period? No. Are you gonna put your foot down and say, uh-uh, we're not doing that today? Okay. Guys, was this the best? No idea. We, we don't know. Maybe. There's a, I don't know how to answer this. That's why I'm talking about it with you. There could be a better solution. The only surefire way of doing it is by doing brute force. So Mr. Bloom's got homework. I've got to do this problem tonight, huh? Am I going to give you the answer tomorrow? Yes. Or someone want to take this on as, as homework for themselves, and then Mr. Bloom can go to the, go to the rink tonight. You guys get what I'm, I'm, I'm saying? So what is the, what, was this the best? We don't, know. we don't know. We really don't know. So that's a good question because we did not use brute force. So I'm just going to say... I, this is funny because I always say we don't know is not really a, an answer. But... In this case, I'm going to argue, we do not know. I'm going to say this, though. Using brute force, and this is in your notes. Using brute force method. Remember when we did the diagram of trees? Using brute force method is the only guaranteed way that you find all the combinations of stuff for these problems. 
So using brute force method is the only guaranteed way to find the cheapest, and I'm running out of room, the cheapest Hamiltonian circuits is what I want to say. Okay? Questions on that? Are you guys okay with that? That's why we don't, we don't dwell much on, on, on final results because we look at the process. And when we get these traveling salesman problems, it's, it's just too, it's too big to do by hand. And I don't have a supercomputer. So questions on that? All right. Um, the rest of the class period, work on this section. Um, the problems start on page 22. And I did th two and three. I did questions two and three, and I just did question eight. So look at these. What I really want to do, I want you to do number seven. I want you guys to do nearest neighbor on that first graph. And I want you to do sorted edges on the second graph and compare your, your solutions. Now, if you remember, that's what Mr. Bloom did yesterday in class. I did number two and number three. Those are the same graphs. I did nearest neighbor on the one on, on number two, and I did sorted edges on number three. Try to duplicate that here in question seven. Any questions on what we're doing? So I'm sorry I went, I went maybe over on this. I just, I love this problem. And you're going to see this complete graph again. Okay? So get used to this. Tomorrow, um, our, our partner activity, you will have one of these. Not this exact one, but it's going to be a complete graph, just looking just like that. Questions? So you should be working in your workbook. Look at page number uh, 23. Do that problem at the bottom, problem number 7, and you have the rest of the class period. And if you have questions, raise your hand. I'll come around and we can talk.